y permanezcamos durante la procesión de entrada en absoluto silencio. Evitemos, por favor, hacer fotografías con flesh para no disturbar la acción litúrgica. Laudetur Jesus Christus. Praised be Jesus Christ. Welcome to the live broadcast of the celebration of the Easter Vigil on this Holy Saturday night, presided over by His Holiness Pope Francis here in St. Peter's Basilica. On this holy night, the Church keeps watch, celebrating the resurrection of Christ in the sacrament and awaiting His return in glory. It is the turning point of the Triduum, the Passover of the New Covenant, which marks Christ's passage from death to life. The rubrics of the Roman Missal reminds us that this mother of all vigils is the greatest and most noble of all solemnities, and it is to be unique in every single church. On behalf of Vatican Media, I would like to welcome all of you who are joining us for this liturgy from around the world. Welcome to all of you joining us through various Vatican News channels, the Vatican News English web portal, the Vatican News uh, Vatican Radio app, uh, the Vatican News YouTube channel, or Facebook live feed, as well as those of you joining us through EWTN TV, Catholic Faith Network in America, Salt and Light TV, Shalom World Television Network USA, Atma Darshan TV, Catholic TV, Shalom TV India and Sunday Shalom, UCTV Uganda Catholic Television. To those of you joining us through radio, especially those listening through relevant radio, Luminous Radio in India, and all of you joining us uh, through radio stations, local diocese and radio broadcast, or those of you picking up the shortwave transmission, and to all of you joining through other internet sites and digital platforms throughout the world, welcome to all of you. I am Bonga Majola, and it is a pleasure and great joy to provide you with the English language commentary, texts and translations for this Holy Saturday liturgy. platforms throughout the world welcome to all of you i am bonga majola and it is a pleasure and great joy to provide you with the english language commentary texts and translations for this holy saturday liturgy On Holy Saturday, the church pauses as we see these images of a, a dark church, very symbolic. The church pauses at the tomb of the Lord, meditating on his passion and his death, as well as his descent into hell and awaiting his resurrection in prayer and fasting. We are reminded of the words from an ancient homily on Holy Saturday. There is a great silence and on earth today, a great silence and stillness. The whole earth keeps silence because the king is asleep. The earth trembled and is still, is still because God has fallen asleep in the flesh and he has raised up all who have slept ever since the world began. God has died in the flesh and hell trembles with fear. We know that the Easter vigil is the climax of the Easter Triduum. By most ancient tradition, this is the night of keeping vigil for the Lord. The faithful carrying lighted lamps are to be like those seeking the Lord when he returns. Tonight, tonight's liturgy is the greatest and most noble of all solemnities. We have the images here of the Holy Father arriving in the Basilica. It is indeed a symbolically charged celebration, rich in ritual and immersed in profound meaning. The liturgy tonight will allow us to embark on a journey from darkness to light. As you can see the images on your screens, the Easter Vigil begins in darkness, symbolizing the darkness of sin and death. 
As the liturgy progresses, the darkness is gradually dispelled by the light of the Paschal candle, symbolizing Christ's triumph over sin and death and the dawn of a new era of salvation. At the heart of this Easter Vigil is then a celebration of light triumphing over darkness. It is a celebration of hope conquering despair. And so as we prepare to enter into this sacred mystery, we are reminded of the promise of new life and salvation that Christ's resurrection brings to all who believe. Yes, the vigil begins in darkness, symbolizing the despair of Good Friday. But soon the light of the Paschal candle will pierce the darkness, indicating the dawn of Easter and the victory of Christ over sin and death. And here we are beginning. <coughs> In questa santissima notte nella quale il Signore e nostro Gesù Cristo è passato dalla morte alla vita, la Chiesa invita i suoi figli sparsi nel mondo. Dear brethren, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ pass, passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. And let us pray. O Padre, che permesso del tuo figlio ci hai comunicato la fiamma viva del tuo fulgore, benedici questo fuoco nuovo. O oh God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. And the Holy Father has just blessed the fire, the new fire, very symbolical as well. And at this moment, he, the deacon brought, is bringing forward the Paschal candle. And the Holy Father is now tracing on the cross with these words, Christ, Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. All times belong to him, and all the ages to him be glory and power through every age and forever. And after this, uh, the Holy Father will now put the five um, wounds symbolized by this grain of incense, symbolizing the five wounds of Jesus Christ. And he says, by his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Cristo Signore, Amen. La luce di Cristo che risorge glorioso disperda le tenebre del cuore e dello spirito. Amen. And may the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. And um, the Holy Father will now uh, put incense in the terrible and um, and uh, he will incense the Pascal candle.
Lumen Christi. And then as we begin the procession, as we have heard, we will be singing at least uh, three times the light of Christ. And we respond, thanks be to God. And the Holy Father now will receive the light um, from the Paschal candle. And this light will be shared by all those present, by all the faithful. Just as the early Christian community gathered around the fire to celebrate the resurrection of Christ, so too does the modern Christian family. We come together in fellowship and unity around the Easter fire. We share in the joy of Christ's victory, strengthening the bonds of love and faith as we journey together in discipleship. We will now then follow this procession. We follow the light of Christ leading us into this dark church and bringing the light, not only in the church, but also in our hearts, in our world, and in our families. The Pascal candle holds profound historical and symbolic significance in Christian tradition, particularly within the context of the Easter Vigil. It plays a role, most solemn liturgical celebration of the Christian year. It is blessed and lit from the new fire, as we have seen, symbolizing the light of Christ bursting forth from the darkness of the tomb. Throughout the vigil, the Pascal candle remains lit as a focal point of prayer and meditation for the faithful. And we know that the use of the Pascal candle can be traced back to the early centuries of Christianity. It likely originated in the Jewish tradition of lighting a special candle during the Passover celebration with commem which commemorates the Israelites' liberation from slavery in Egypt. For us today, the Paschal candle symbolizes Christ as the light of the world, echoing Jesus' own words in the Gospel of John. Its flame rep represents the presence of the risen Christ among his people, illuminating the darkness of sin and death with the light of his resurrection. We follow the procession. There is about 34 cardinals who are taking part on this procession and 25 bishops. And there's about 200 priests who have gathered together with the people of God during this celebration. We once again take a moment and we listen and we respond. Lumen Christi light of Christ. Thanks be to God. And once again, uh, we continue sharing the light from the Paschal candle and is distributed among the people, among those who have gathered here in this assembly, in this St. Peter's Basilica. We, we take our time as well to be moved by this silence, by this darkness, and by this flame that is slowly being distributed 
illuminating our hearts, illuminating those dark areas in our in our own lives and in our own families. The Roman Missal summarizes this symbolism perfectly. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. This connects the Easter candle to Jesus, light of the world, as he describes himself in the Gospel of John. And as we continue seeing from the Easter candle, I lit all other candles in the church showing how Jesus is the source of our light. The flame that is just a Nomen Christi. The flame in front of us reminds us of the pillar of fire that led the people of Israel and protected them as they escaped the slavery of the Egyptians. We will soon proclaim the exalted, which refers to this symbolism when it states, This is the night that with a pillar of fire banish the darkness of sin. We can see then the movement of this liturgy from darkness and at this moment the whole church seems to be lit. There is light. Christ is among us. And as we have noticed the deacon carrying uh, the Easter, the Pascal candle, had to pause about three times between the altar of the confession and uh, during the procession and he proclaimed the light of Christ and the assembly responded thanks be to God. This procession is similar to the one that took place during Good Friday celebrations of the pa Passion of the Lord and as we can see the procession has reached the altar, the Pascal candle is put in its place next to the ember Lights are generally put, as we can see, they are lit, and um, the Holy Father puts once again incense in the thurible, and the Paschal candle will be incensed, and then the deacon will intone the Easter proclamation known as the Exalted. beautiful movement, uh, very symbolic, which has been from uh, darkness to light. And now words and music are used to praise and thank God for what the light represents, God's saving activity throughout human history, culminating in Christ's defeat of death and resurrection from the dead. The deacon has just received the blessing from the Holy Father, and he will proceed towards the ember and next to the Paschal candle, and he will intone, he will intone the exalted, the Easter proclamation. We know that uh, for centuries the exalted has served as a liturgical jewel of unsurpassed beauty on this, the mother of all holy vigils. And St. Augustine aptly describes the Easter vigil, um, and as the exalted exhorts us, be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, Ablaze with light from her eternal King, let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. May this venerable Easter proclamation serve us and our assemblies as a genuine expression of Easter hope and joy. We now join the deacon as he intones the exalted. If 
manifest in sciences, the Pascal candle. Exulted yam angelica turba celorum. Exulten divina mysteria. Et protanti regis victoria. Tuba in sonet salutari. Gaudeat et telus, tantis irradiata fulgoribus, et eterni regis splendore illustrata, totibus orbis se sensiat, amisis se caligine. Letetur et mater ecclesia, tanti luminis adornata fulgoribus, et manis populorum vocibus, ec aula resulte. Qua propter astantes vos, Fratres carissimi, atam miram huius sancti luminis claritate, una mecum queso dei omnipotentis, misericordiam invocate. Exalt, let them exalt the host of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty king's triumph. Be glad, let earth, let earth be glad, as glory floods her ablaze with light from her eternal king. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let the holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Gracias agamus, Domino Deo Nostro. Vere dignum erius tum est, Therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy night, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praise. It is truly right and just with ardent love of mind and heart and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father and Jesus Christ our Lord, His Son, His only begotten. Who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feast of Passover in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorpost of believers. Mare rubrum, 
This is the night when once you led our forebearers, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to His Holy Ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble, O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling. To ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ, O happy fault, that end so great, so glorious a Redeemer, O truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, dazzling in the night, for me and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. In huius igitur noctis gratia, suscipe sancte pate, laudis huius sacrificium vespertinum, quod ibi in hac cerei oblatione solemni, per ministrorum manus de operibus apu. Sacro Sancta Redit Ecclesia. Sed iam columne huius preconia novimus, quam in honorem Dei, rutilans inis accendit. On this, your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, a fire into many flames divided, 
yet never dimmed by shedding of its light, for it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. In quaternis celestia, humanis divina junguntur. Oramos ergo te domine, uccereus iste in honorum tu in omnis. O truly blessed night, when things of heaven are word to those of earth and divine to the human, Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. Lucifer matutinus inveniat. Ile in quam Lucifer quinescit ocasu. Christus filius tuus, qui regressus ab inferis, humano generis. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. And now after setting aside their candles, all will sit and then we will enter now into the liturgy of the word. But before uh, we sit, the Holy Father will instruct, um, introduce the liturgy of the word and we'll take a moment and we listen to the words of the Holy Father. <coughs> Fratelli e sorelle, Dopo il solenne inizio della veglia, ascoltiamo con cuore sereno la parola di Dio. Meditiamo come nell'antica alleanza Dio ha salvato il suo popolo e nella pienezza dei tempi ha mandato a noi il suo Figlio come Redentore. Preghiamo perché Dio, nostro Padre, porti a compimento quest'opera di salvezza realizzata nella Pasqua. Dear brothers, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved His people and in these the last days has sent us His Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this Paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. And the first reading is taken from the book of Genesis and it's read in French. Dieu dit, faisons l'homme à notre image, selon notre ressemblance. Qu'il soit le maître des poissons de la mer, des oiseaux du ciel, des bestiaux, de toutes les bêtes sauvages. God said, let us make man in our own image, in the likeness of ourselves, and let them be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of the of heaven and cattle and the wild beasts and all the reptiles that crawl upon the earth. God created man in the image of himself. In the image of God he created him, male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and conquer it. Be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, and all living animals on the earth. Dieu dit encore, Je vous donne toute plante qui God porte said, See, I give you all the seed-bearing plants that are upon the whole earth, and all the trees with seed-bearing fruit, this shall be your food. 
à tous les animaux de la terre, à tous les oiseaux du ciel, à tout ce qui va et vient sur la terre et qui a souffle de vie. To all white beasts, all birds of heaven and all living reptiles on the earth, I give all the foliage of plants for food. And so it was. God saw all he had made and indeed it was very good. And we'll now recite the responsorial psalm. During the liturgy of the word, we have uh, three um, readings from the Old Testament, and each one is followed by a responsorial psalm and a prayer. And we respond, The Lord fills the earth with his love. The Lord is faithful and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right and fills the earth with his love. By his word the heavens were made, by the breath of his mouth all the stars. He collects the waves of the ocean, he stores up the depths of the sea. God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own. From the heavens the Lord looks forth, he sees all the children of men. And those are the words we've just prayed the responsorial psalm, Psalm 32. And now we will stand for the prayer. Preghiamo. Oh Dio che in modo mirabile ci hai creati a tua immagine e in modo più mirabile ci hai rinnovati e credenti, fa che resistiamo con la forza dello Spirito alla seduzione del peccato per giungere alla gioia eterna. Per Cristo nostro Signore. O oh God, who wonderfully created human nature and still more wonderfully redeemed it, grant us, we pray, to set our minds against the enticements of sin that we may merit to attain eternal joys. Del libro del the second reading is from the book of Exodus and it's proclaimed in Spanish. ¿Por qué sigues clamando a mí? Di a los hijos de Israel que se pongan en marcha. Y tú, alza tu callado, extiende tu mano sobre el mar y divídelo. Para que los hijos de Israel pasen por medio del the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the sons of Israel to march on 
for yourself, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and part it for the sons of Israel to walk through the sea on dry ground. I for my part will make the heart of the Egyptians so stubborn that they will follow them. So shall I win myself glory at the expense of Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his horsemen. And when I have won glory for myself at the expense of Pharaoh and his chariots and his army, the Egyptians will learn that I am the Lord. Then the angel of the Lord who marched at the front of the army of Israel changed station and moved to their rear. The pillar of cloud changed station from the front to the back of them and remained there. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. The cloud was dark and the night passed without the armies drawing any closer to the whole night long. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove back the sea with a strong eastern wind all night and he made dry land of the sea. The waters parted and the sons of Israel went on dry ground right into the sea, walls of water right and to the left of the sea. The Egyptians gave chase after them. They went right into the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. In the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of Egyptians from the pillar of fire and of cloud and threw the army into confusion. He so cloaked their chariots' wheels that they could scarcely make headway. Let us flee from the Israelites, the Egyptians cried. The Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Stretch out your hand over the sea, the Lord said to Moses, that waters may flow back on the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and as day broke, the sea returned to its bed. The fleeing Egyptians marched right into it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the very middle of the sea. The retaining waters overwhelmed the chariots and the horsemen of Pharaoh, whole army, which had followed the Israelites and into the sea. Not a single one of them was left, but the sons of Israel had marched through the sea on dry ground, walls of water to right and to left of them. That day the Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. Israel witnessed the great acts that the Lord had performed against the Egyptians, and the people venerated the Lord, they put their faith in the Lord and in Moses his servant. It was then that Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song in honor of the Lord. Cantiamo al Signore, stupenda è la sua vittoria. Cantiamo al Signore, stupenda è la sua vittoria. I will sing to the Lord, glorious is triumph. Perché ammirabilmente trionfato, cavallo e cavaliere ha gettato nel mare. Mia forza e mio canto è il Signore, egli è stato la mia salvezza. E il mio Dio lo voglio lodare, il Dio di mio Padre lo voglio esaltare. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph, horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength, my song, my salvation. This is my God, and I extol him, my Father's God, and I give him praise. 
i carri del faraone e il suo esercito li ha scagliati nel mare. I suoi combattenti scelti furono sommersi nel mare rosso. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh he held into the sea. The flower of his army is drowned in the sea. Gli abissi li ricoprirono, sprofondarono come pietra. La tua destra, Signore, è gloriosa per la potenza. La tua destra, Signore, annienta il nemico. The deep hide them, they sank like a stone. Your right hand, Lord, glorious in its power. Your right hand, Lord, has shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your glory, you crushed the foe. And we now stand and we pray. Preghiamo, O Dio, che hai rivelato nella luce della nuova alleanza il significato degli antichi prodigi, così che il Mar Rosso fosse l'immagine del fonte battesimale e proprio liberato dalla schiavitù prefigurasse il popolo cristiano. Concedi che tutti gli uomini, mediante la fede, siano resi partecipi del privilegio. O oh God, who by the light of the New Testament have unlocked the meaning of wonders worked in former times, so that the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font and the nation delivered from slavery foreshadows the Christian people. Grant, we pray, that all nations obtaining the privilege of Israel may merit of faith, may be reborn by partaking of your Spirit through Christ our Lord. And now, that reading is from uh, the prophet Isaiah, and it is proclaimed in Portuguese. O teu Redentor será o Santo de Israel, que se chama Deus de toda a terra. Como a mulher abandonada e de alma... Thus says the Lord, now your Creator will be your husband. His name, the Lord of hosts. Your Redeemer will be the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. Yes, like a forsaken wife, distressed in spirit, the Lord calls you back. Does a man cast off the wife of his youth? says our God. I did forsake you for a brief moment, but with great love will I take you back. In excess of anger, for a moment I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love I have taken pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. I am now as I was in the days of Noah, when I saw that Noah's waters should never flood the world again. So now I swear concerning my anger with you and the threats I made against you. For the mountains may depart, the hills be shaken, but my love for you will never leave you, and my covenant of peace with you will never be shaken, says the Lord who takes pity on you. Unhappy creature, storm-tossed, disconsolate, see I will set your stones on carbuncles and your foundations on sapphires. I will make rubies your battlements, your gates crystal, and your entire wall precious stones. Your sons will be all be taught, your sons will all be taught by the Lord. The prosperity of your sons will be great. You will be founded on integrity, remote from oppression. You will have nothing to fear, remote from terror. It will not approach you.
Si esalterò, Signore, perché mi hai risollevato. Si esalterò, Signore. The responsorial psalm to Psalm 21. I will praise you, Lord. You have rescued me. Esalterò, Signore, perché mi hai risollevato. Non hai permesso ai miei nemici di gioire su di me. Signore, hai fatto risalire la mia vita dagli inferi. Mi hai fatto rivivere perché non scendessi nella fossa. I will praise you, Lord, you have rescued me and have not let my enemies rejoice over me. O oh Lord, you have raised my soul from the dead, restored me to life from those who sink into the grave. Cantate inni al Signore, o Suoi fedeli, della Sua santità celebrate il ricordo, perché la Sua collera dura un istante, la Sua bontà tutta la vita. Alla sera è ospite il pianto, e al mattino la gioia. Sing psalms to the Lord, you who love him. Give thanks to his holy name. His anger lasts but a moment. His favor all through life. At night there are tears, but joy comes with dawn. Ascolta, Signore, abbi pietà di me. Signore, vieni presto in mio aiuto, hai mutato il mio lamento in danza. Signore, mio Dio, ti renderò grazie per sempre. The Lord listened and had pity. The Lord came to my help. For me, you have changed my mourning into dancing. O oh Lord my God, I will thank you forever. And we stand and we will pray once again. Preghiamo. Dio onnipotente ed eterno, moltiplica a gloria del tuo nome la discendenza promessa alla fede dei patriarchi e aumenta il numero dei tuoi figli perché la Chiesa aveva realizzato il disegno universale. Almighty ever living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you blessed to the patriarchs. By reason of their faith and through sacred adoption, increase the children of your promise so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, your church may now see in great part fulfilled. And now the deacon intones the Gloria.
Preghiamo. O oh Dio, che illumini questa santissima notte con la gloria della resurrezione del Signore. <coughs> Raviva nella tua Chiesa lo spirito d'adozione filiale, perché rinnovati nel corpo e nell'anima siamo sempre fedeli al tuo servizio. O oh God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stay up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service. And we will now listen to the epistle, the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized in his death. In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. If in union with Christ we have imitated his death, we shall also imitate him in his resurrection. We must realize that our former selves have been crucified with him to destroy the sinful body and to free us from the slavery of sin. When a Christian dies, of course, he is finished with sin. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. When he died, he died once for all to sin, so his life now is life with God. And in that way, you too must consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. And now, after we've listened to the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, the deacon will approach the Holy Father and he will intone the Alleluia and make an announcement. Beatissime Pater, Annuncio Vobis Gaudium Magnum, Quod est Alleluia.
Most Holy Father, I bring you tidings of great joy, which is Alleluia. And that's how the deacon intoned the Alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. right hand has triumphed, his right hand raised me up. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. Father is putting incense in the terrible and the procession with the gospel, with the book of the gospels towards the embo after he has blessed the deacon who will be proclaiming the gospel. And the choir continues singing the Alleluia. And we know that the symbolism of uh, Alleluia during the Easter vigil is particularly profound as it represents the culmination of the Lenten journey and the joyful proclamation of Christ's resurrection. Alleluia is an expression of joy and praise in the Christian tradition derived from the Hebrew word meaning praise the Lord. During the Easter Vigil, the Church burst forth with the Alleluias after a period of abstaining from our use during the season of Lent. After a season of abstaining from using the word Alleluia during the season of Lent, so this sudden reintroduction of Alleluia symbolizes the joyous exuberance of Easter and the victory of Christ over sin and death. And we will now listen to the Gospel. It's from, we'll read from the Gospel according to Mark. Dominus Fobiscum Lectio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Marcum Passato il sabato, Maria di Magdala, Maria madre di Giacomo e Salome, comprarono oli aromatici per andare a ungerlo. Di buon mattino, il primo giorno della settimana, vennero al sepolcro a levare del sole. Dicevano tra loro, Chi ci farà rotolare via la pietra dall'ingresso del sepolcro? When the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices with which to go and anoint him. And very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb just as the sun was rising. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked, they could see that the stone, which was very big, had already been rolled back. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe seated on the right-hand side, and they were struck with amazement. But he said to them, There is no need for alarm. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, he has risen. He is not here. See, here is the place where they laid him. But you must go and tell his disciples and Peter, He is going before you to Galilee. It is there you will see him, just as he told you.
Le donne vanno al sepolcro alle prime luci dell'alba, ma dentro di sé conservano il buio della notte. Pur essendo in cammino, sono The women go to the tomb at daybreak, while they still feel the darkness of night. They continue to walk, yet their hearts remain at the foot of the cross. The tears of Good Friday are not yet dried, they are grief-stricken, overwhelmed by the sense that all has been said and done. A stone has sealed the fate of Jesus. They are concerned about that stone, for they wonder who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb. Yet once they arrive, they are taken aback when they see the amazing power of the Easter event. When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. Fermiamoci, cari fratelli e sorelle, su questi due momenti. Let us stop and reflect on these two moments, which bring us to the unexpected joy of Easter. Firstly, the women anxiously wonder who will roll away the stone from the tomb. Then, looking up, they see that it had already been rolled back. Anzitutto, Primo momento, First, la che il loro cuore there is the question that troubles their grieving hearts. Who will roll away the stone from the tomb? That stone marked the end of Jesus' story. Now buried in the night of death, he, the life that came into the world, had been killed. He who proclaimed the merciful love of the Father had met with no mercy. He who relieved sinners of the burden of their condemnation had been condemned to the cross. The Prince of Peace, who freed a woman caught in adultery, in adultery from a vicious stoning, now lay buried behind a great stone. That stone, an overwhelming obstacle, symbolized what the women felt in their hearts. It represented the end of their hopes, now dashed by the obscure and sorrowful mystery that put an end to their dreams. Fratelle, sorelle, Brothers and sisters, it can also be that way with us. There are times when we may feel that a great stone blocks the door of our hearts, stifling life, extinguishing hope, imprisoning us in the tomb of our fears and regrets, and standing in the way of joy and hope. We encounter such tombstones on our journey through life, in all the experiences and situations that rob us of enthusiasm and of the strength to persevere. We encounter them at times of sorrow, in the emptiness left by the death of our loved ones, in the failure and fears that hold us back from accomplishing the good we mean to do. In, li, li troviamo in tutte le chiasure we che encounter them in all the forms of self-absorption that stifle our impulses to generosity and sincere love, in the rubber walls of selfishness and indifference that hold us back in the effort, selfishness and indifference that hold us back in the effort to build more just and humane cities and societies. We found these stones in all our aspirations for peace that are shattered by cruel hatred and the brutality of war. When we experience these disappointments, do we also have the sensation that all these dreams are doomed to failure? and that we too should ask ourselves in anguish who will roll away the stone from the tomb. Yet the same women who bore this darkness in their hearts tell us something quite extraordinary. When they looked up, they saw that the stone which was very large 
had already been rolled back. This is the Pasch of Christ, the revelation of God's power, the victory of life over death, the triumph of light over darkness, the rebirth of hope amid the ruins of failure. It is the Lord, the God of the impossible, who rolled away the stone forever. Even now he opens our tombs so that hope may be born ever anew. We too then should look up to him. And then the second moment, let us look up then to Jesus. After assuming our humanity, he descended into the depths of death and filled them with the power of his divine life, allowing an infinite ray of light to break through for each of us. Raised up by the Father in his and our raised up by the Father in his and our flesh, in the power of the Holy Spirit, he turned a new page in the history of the human race. Henceforth, if we allow Jesus to take us by the hand, no experience of failure or sorrow, however painful, will have the last word on the meaning and destiny of our lives. Henceforth, if we allow ourselves to be raised up by the risen Lord, no setback, no suffering, no death will be able to hold our progress towards the fullness of life. Henceforth, we Christians proclaim that this history has meaning, an all-embracing meaning, a meaning no longer tainted by absurdity and shadows, a meaning that we call God. All the waters of our transformation converge on Him. They do not pour down into the depths of nothingness and absurdity, for His tomb is empty, and the one who died has now been revealed as the living one. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is our Pasch. He is the one who brings us from darkness into light, who is bound to us forever, who rescues us from the abyss of sin and death and draws us into the radiant realm of forgiveness and eternal life. Brothers and sisters, and sisters, let us look up to him. Let us welcome Jesus, the God of life, let us welcome him into our lives, and today, once again, let us say yes to him. Then no stone will block the way to our hearts. No tomb will suppress the joy of life. No failure will doom us to despair. Brothers and sisters, let us lift our eyes to him and ask that the power of his resurrection may roll away the heavy stones that weigh down our souls. Let us lift our eyes to him, the risen Lord, and press forward in the certainty that against the obscure backdrop of our failed hopes and our deaths, the eternal life that he came to bring is even now present in our midst. Dear brother, dear sister, let your heart burst with jubilation on this holy night. Together, let us sing of Jesus' resurrection. Sing to him. Sing to him distant lands, rivers and plains, deserts and mountains. Sing to the Lord of life, risen from the tomb, more brilliant than a thousand suns, all peoples beset by evil and plagued by injustice, all peoples displaced and devastated. On this holy night, cast aside your songs of sadness and despair. The man of sorrows is no longer in prison. He has opened a breach in the wall. He is hastening to meet you. In the darkness, let an unexpected shout of joy resound. He is alive. He is risen. 
voi nella fatica del vivere, voi che vi sentite indegne di cantare, una fiamma nuova traversa il vostro cuore, una freschezza nuova pervada la vostra voce. E tu, miei fratelli e sorelle, small and great, fratelli e sorelle, you who are weary of life, who feel unworthy to sing, let a new flame be kindled in your heart, let a new vitality be heard in your voice. It is the Pasch of the Lord. It is the feast of the living. And that's how the Holy Father concludes his homily. And you, my brothers and sisters, small and great, you who are weary of life and feel unworthy to sing, let a new flame be kindled in your, in your heart. Let new vitality be heard in your voice. It is the Pasch of the Lord. It is the feast of the living. We take a moment and we allow these words of the Holy Father to sink deep down in our hearts. We allow the light of Easter to dispel all darkness, all sadness and all sorrow in our hearts. We allow this new life of Easter, the risen one, to be alive within us. moment we see the baptismal font being prepared by two deacons bringing uh, water the water that will be blessed we have eight um, catechumens who will be baptized confirmed and they will receive holy communion and fully received in the church on this night and uh, we will now then enter into the rite of baptism we'll begin by the calling of all the saints which will help us to recall that our brothers and sisters are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses who make up the one body of Christ. Fratelli e sorelle, accompagniamo con preghiera unanime la gioiosa speranza dei nostri catecumeni, perché Dio Padre Onipotente, nella sua grande misericordia, li guidi al fonte della rigenerazione. Dearly brothers, with one heart and one soul, let, let us by our prayers come to the aid of these our brothers and sisters in their blessed hope, so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help. And we pray the litany of the saints.
Onipotente ed Eterno, manifesta la tua presenza nei sacramenti del tuo grande amore e manda lo spirito di adozione a ricreare nuovi figli dal fonte battesimale. Almighty ever living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism, so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power. And now the Holy Father will bless the water. Dopo di un'invisibile potenza, le meraviglie della salvezza, e in molti modi, attraverso i tempi, hai preparato l'acqua, tua creatura, a essere segno del Vantissimo. Discenda, Padre, in questa acqua... O God, who by invisible power accomplished the wondrous effects through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration so that from the mystery of one and the same elements of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shroud through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism. And we see now the deacon immersing the Paschal candle in the water a very powerful symbol of dying and being reborn that's what takes place during baptism we die to sin and we are born to new life the candles from the pub from the Pascal candle and those who are to be baptized the catechumens will then be invited to renew sin uh, to renounce Satan and to profess their faith
the candles are lit once again for the renewal of our baptismal promises and uh, this is done through the renunciation of Satan and the profession of faith two actions which are closely connected which form the foundation of baptism the renewal of baptism baptismal promises is a symbolic reaffirmation of one's baptismal vows it allows the faithful to recommit themselves to their baptismal identity as followers of Christ and members of his church carissimi carissimi avete chiesto il battesimo avete chiesto il battesimo e avete impiegato un lungo tempo nella vostra preparazione dear brothers and sisters we have asked to be baptized and have dedicated much time to your preparation I now invite you before being baptized to make your profession of faith with confidence before the church along with all those who are taking part in this holy vigil Rinunciate al peccato per vivere nella libertà dei figli di Dio. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Rinunciate alla seduzione del male. Do you renounce the law of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Rinunciate a Satana. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Credete in Dio Padre onnipotente? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And we will now go into the actual performance of the rite of baptism where the Holy Father will baptize each of the catechumens using the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We see the deacons bringing uh, the baptismal font closer to the Holy Father. We know that in the Latin Church, this, in, this triple infusion is accompanied by the minister's words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Whereas in the Eastern liturgies, the catechumen turns towards the East and the priest says, The servant of God is baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. At the invocation of each person of the Most Holy Trinity, Alvaro. the Holy Father Holy immerses Chiri the candidate in the water and the raises him up Chiesa. again. Che tutti insieme abbiamo professato? Sì, lo voglio. Dear brother, you have. Alvaro, io te battesso nel nome del Padre, del Figlio e dello Spirito Santo. We see now the candidates approaching the Holy Father, the catechumens, uh, one by one, accompanied by their sponsors. Uh, Luca Piero, eight of them. Vuoi ricevere il battesimo nella fede della Chiesa che tutti insieme abbiamo professato? Sì, lo voglio. And the Holy Father asked them first, do you want to be baptized in the faith of the church that we have just professed? And the catechumen responds yes, and then the Holy Father baptizes. Eight candidates from uh, different countries, from Korea, from Italy, from Japan, and from Albania. Cristina, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Spirit of God. Rosaria, vuoi ricevere il battesimo nella fede della Chiesa che tutti insieme abbiamo professato? Sì, buona amnità. Rosaria, 
Io te battesto nel nome del Padre, del Figlio e dello Spirito Santo. Everybody is from the Republic of Korea. And now we have Diana from Italy. Diana, vuoi ricevere il battesimo nella fede della Chiesa che tutti insieme abbiamo professato? Sì, lo voglio. Diana, io ti battesto nel nome del Padre, del Figlio e dello Spirito Santo. Luca, vuoi ricevere il battesimo nella fede della Chiesa che tutti insieme abbiamo professato? No, so mimas. And uh, Luke is from Japan. Luca, io te battesto nel nome del Padre, del Figlio e dello Spirito Santo. Daniele, vuoi ricevere il battesimo nella fede della Chiesa che tutti insieme abbiamo professato? Sì, lo voglio. Daniele, Daniele, from Italy. Daniele, io te battesto nel nome del Padre, del Figlio e dello Spirito Santo. Elisa Margherita, vuoi ricevere il battesimo nella fede della Chiesa che tutti insieme abbiamo professato? Sì, lo voglio. Elisa Margherita from Albania. Elisa Margherita, io te battesto nel nome del Padre, del Figlio e dello Spirito Santo. E un altro molto powerful symbol now after that one of water is uh, the handing over of the white garment which symbolizes that the person baptized has put on Christ has risen with Christ the candle lit from the Easter candle signifies as Christ has enlightened the newly baptized in him the baptized are the light of the world the newly baptized is now in the only son a child of God entitled to say the prayer of the children of God our father so the good parents they will be invited to come forward and they will give the newly baptized the light of Christ but before that we'll have the white garment first Fratelli carissimi, siete diventati nuove creature e siete rivestiti di Cristo. Ricevete perciò la veste bianca e portatela senza macchia fino al tribunale del nostro Signore Gesù Cristo per avere la vita eterna. Amen. Dear brothers, we have become a new creation and have clothed yourselves in Christ. Receive this white garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. And the new fights are now being vested in white. After the washing of a regeneration capable of recreating the person and the likeness of God in true holiness, Since the first centuries, it has seemed natural to clothe the baptized in a new white garment, reflecting the splendor of life received in Christ and in the Holy Spirit. Avvicinatevi, padrini e madrine, per consegnare ai neofiti il simbolo della luce. And the Holy Father uh, inviting the godparents to come forward so that they can give to the newly baptized the light of Christ. Even the ritual um, consignment of the flame drawn from the Easter candle recalls the effect of baptism. Receive the light of Christ. These are the words the Holy Father will say 
and these words recall that we are not the light but rather the light of Jesus Christ who risen from the dead overcame the shadows of evil we are called to receive his splendor as the flame of the Easter candle gives light to each single candle so the love of the risen Lord inflames the hearts of the baptized filling them with light and warmth and this is why since the first centuries baptism has also been called enlightenment and the one who was baptized is called enlightened parents one by one lighting a candle from the Pascal candle and this will be the light to be handed over to the newly baptized Siete diventati luce di Cristo. Camminate sempre come figli della luce, perché perseverando nella fede, been enlightened by Christ, walk always as children of the light, and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. Con tutti i santi nel When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. And now we will proceed to the celebration of the Sacrament of Confirmation. We see the candidates, the catechumens, the newly baptized, who are going to be confirmed, slowly approaching the Holy Father, and one by one accompanied by their sponsor, holding the light of Christ, will then be anointed with the oil, with the crisp oil. Carissimi neofiti, che nel battesimo siete rinati alla vita di figli di Dio e siete diventati membra del Cristo e del suo popolo sacerdotale. My dear newly baptized, born again in Christ by baptism, you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. They promise strength of the Holy Spirit, which you, you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the Church and to build up the body of Christ in the faith and love. Fratelli carissimi, My dear friends, let us pray to God our Father that He will pour out the Holy Spirit on these newly baptized to strengthen them with the, His gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. And the Holy Father will extend His hands over the newly baptized. Che hai rigenerato questi tuoi figli dall'acqua e dello Spirito Santo, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And the candidates, the newly baptized, will now approach the Holy Father one by one, accompanied by their sponsor. If in baptism it is the Holy Spirit who immerses us in Christ, 
then the confirmation it is Christ who fills us with his spirit. Álvaro riceve il sigillo dello Spirito Santo che ti è dato in dono. Amen. La pace sia con te. E con Álvaro be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Father says peace be with you and Álvaro responds and also with you. And they exchange very uh, warm moment there with the Holy Father. Luca Piero riceve il sigillo dello Spirito Santo che ti è dato in dono. Amen. La pace sia con te. Con il tuo Spirito. We know that the sacrament of confirmation is conferred through uh, the anointing with crisis on the forehead. Riceve il sigillo dello Spirito Santo che ti è stato dato in dono. Amen. La pace sia con te. Con tuo Spirito. So the Holy Spirit is the invisible gift that is bestowed and the chrism is its visible seal. Rosaria, riceve il sigillo dello Spirito Santo che ti è stato dato in dono. Amen. La pace sia con te. Tuana sate yon kwam ke. Diana, riceve il sigillo dello Spirito Santo che ti è stato dato in dono. Amen. La pace sia con te. E con il tuo spirito. So in receiving on the forehead the sign of the cross with fragrant oil, confirmandi thus receive an indelible spiritual imprint, the character which confirms them more Luca. perfectly to Christ riceve and gives them the grace to spread Santo the good aroma among them. Amen. La pace sia con te. Anotato Tomodi. Daniele riceve il sigillo dello Spirito Santo che ti è stato dato in dono. Amen. La pace sia con te. E con il tuo Spirito. Now in his general audience of May 2018, Pope Francis reminded us that confirmation is received only once by the spiritual dynamism inspired by the holy anointing perseveres over time. Elisa Margherita riceve il sigillo dello Spirito Santo che ti è stato dato in dono. Amen. La pace sia con te. E con il tuo Spirito. And the Holy Father tells us that we will never finish fulfilling the mandate to diffuse everywhere the good fragrance of a holy life inspired by the fascinating simplicity of the Gospel. No one receives confirmation for oneself or alone but to cooperate in the spiritual growth of others only in this way by opening and coming out of ourselves to meet our brothers and sisters can we truly grow and not merely delude ourselves of doing so. In fact, what we receive as the gift of God must be given. The gift is to be given in order to be fruitful and not instead buried due to selfish fears as the parable of the talents teaches. These are the words of the Holy Father during the general audience in May 2018. And we now proceed to the prayers of the faithful. Fratelli e sorelle, resi partecipe della gioia pasquale e rigenerati dall'acqua dello Spirito Santo, affidiamo a Dio Padre la nostra fiduciosa preghiera. Brothers and sisters, as sure as in the joy of Easter, reborn by water and the Holy Spirit, let us now confidently entrust our prayers to God the Father. Lord, through Christ, glory graciously hear us, we respond. Accresci nella Chiesa il desiderio di servirti, 
annunciando il Vangelo del tuo Cristo. Increase the Church's zeal to serve you in proclaiming the Gospel of your Christ. Custodisci e benedici il ministero di Papa Francesco e di tutti i pastori della Chiesa. Guide and bless the ministry of Pope Francis and all the pastors of the Church. Guida le azioni dei governanti in favore del bene comune e della pace. Direct the actions of government leaders in service to the common good and peace. Alimenta la fede dei fratelli e delle sorelle che oggi hanno ricevuto i sacramenti pasquali. Nurture the faith of our brothers and sisters who on this day receive the Paschal Sacraments. Proteggi tutti i popoli della terra dalla guerra, dall'odio e dalla dall'esuetazione al male. Sustain with Easter strength those persecuted for their faith in the risen one. Sostieni con la forza della Pasqua i perseguitati a causa della fede nel risorto. Ravviva la speranza di una vita dignitosa e colma di benedizioni per i poveri, i malati e gli emarginati. Revive the hope of the poor, the sick and the marginalized for a life of dignity filled with your blessings. Ammetti i nostri fratelli e sorelle defunti alla visione del tuo volto misericordioso. Grant to our deceased brothers and sisters the vision of your merciful countenance. O Padre, che nel tuo figlio ci hai liberato dal peccato e dalla morte, ascolta la nostra preghiera. Father, in your son you have delivered us from sin and death. Hear our prayer and grant that we may experience the joy of the resurrection and that you have bestowed on us in Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Proceed then to the liturgy of the Eucharist, which begins with the offertory of uh, gifts, and we see our newly baptized, the new eight new members of uh, the Catholic Church, bringing the gifts to the Holy Father, the gifts of bread and wine, gifts to be offered on the altar be prayed over and to be consecrated and through the work of the Holy Spirit they will become for us the bread of life the body and the blood of Jesus Christ at this moment we are invited as well to associate ourselves and participate in this offering we offer ourselves, we offer our family members, our relatives, our concerns. In whatever needs light in our lives, we present it together with this bread and wine on the altar. And we pray for the grace to persevere. We pray for the grace to be the light of Christ and to embrace the light of Christ in our own lives. Companies, uh, this offer tree with the words of Psalm 117. The Lord's right hand has triumphed, his right hand raised me up. I shall not die, I shall live and recount his deeds.
the sacrament on the altar offering the gifts of bread and wine you see our images right now an image of the offering of prayer and gifts is represented by incense which consumed by fire releases a perfumed smoke that raises upwards and the celebrant on the altar will incense the offerings will incense the cross and the altar and then the celebrant and the altar together with the priestly people visibly manifest their bond of offering which unites these realities to Christ's sacrifice celebrant on the altar today is Cardinal Leonardo Sandri. Pregate, fratelli e sorelle, perché il mio e vostro sacrificio sia gradito a Dio Padre Onnipotente. Il Signore riceve dalle tue mani di questo sacrificio a lode e gloria del suo nome, per il bene e di tutta la sua santa Chiesa. Con queste offerte accogli, o oh Signore, le preghiere del tuo popolo. Accept, O oh Lord, we ask the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mystery may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. In alto i nostri cuori, rendiamo grazie al Signore nostro Dio. È veramente cosa buona e giusta, nostro dovere e fonte di salvezza, proclamare sempre la verità. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night above all to load you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
Veramente santo sei tuo Padre, ed è giusto che ogni creatura ti lodi per mezzo del tuo Figlio, il Signore nostro Gesù Cristo, nella potenza dello Spirito Santo, fai vivere e santifichi l'universo e continui a radunare intorno a te un popolo che dall'Oriente all'Occidente offra al tuo nome il sacrificio perfetto. Ti preghiamo umilmente, santifica e consacra con il tuo Spirito i doni che ti abbiamo presentato, perché diventino il corpo e il sangue del tuo Figlio, il Signore nostro Gesù Cristo, che ci ha comandato di celebrare questi misteri. Egli, nella notte in cui veniva tradito, prese il pane, ti rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione, lo spezzò, lo diede ai Suoi discepoli e disse, «Prendete e mangiatene tutti. Questo è il mio corpo offerto in sacrificio per voi». Allo stesso modo, dopo aver cenato, prese il calice, ti rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione, lo diede ai Suoi discepoli e disse «Prendete e bevetene tutti, questo è il calice del mio sangue, per la nuova ed eterna alleanza, versato per voi e per tutti, in remissione dei peccati. Fate questo in memoria di me. Mistero della fede Celebrando il memoriale della passione redentrice del Tuo Figlio, della Sua mirabile risurrezione e ascensione al cielo, in attesa della Sua venuta nella gloria, Ti offriamo, Padre, in rendimento di grazie, questo sacrificio vivo e santo. Guarda con amore e riconosci nell'offerta della Tua Chiesa la vittima immolata per la nostra redenzione. E a noi, che ci nutriamo del corpo e del sangue del Tuo Figlio, dona la pienezza dello Spirito Santo, perché diventiamo in Cristo un solo corpo e un solo Spirito. Lo Spirito Santo faccia di noi un'offerta perenne a Te gradita, perché possiamo ottenere il regno promesso con i Tuoi eletti, con la Beata Maria, Vergine e Madre di Dio, San Giuseppe, suo Sposo, i Tuoi Santi Apostoli, i Gloriosi Martiri e tutti i Santi nostri intercessori presso di Te. Ti preghiamo, Padre, questo sacrificio della nostra riconciliazione doni pace e salvezza al mondo intero. Conferma nella fede e nell'amore la Tua Chiesa pellegrina sulla terra. Il Tuo servo e nostro Papa Francesco, l'Ordine Episcopale, i presbiteri, i diaconi e il popolo che Tu hai redento. Sostieni nell'impegno cristiano i Tuoi figli che oggi, mediante il lavacro della rigenerazione e il dono dello Spirito Santo, hai chiamato a far parte del Tuo popolo. Con il Tuo aiuto possano camminare sempre in novità di vita. Ascolta la preghiera di questa famiglia 
che hai convocato alla Tua presenza nella notte gloriosa della risurrezione di Cristo Signore nel Suo vero corpo. Ricongiungi a Te, Padre misericordioso, tutti i Tuoi figli ovunque dispersi. Accogli nel Tuo regno i nostri fratelli e sorelle defunti e tutti coloro che in pace con Te hanno lasciato questo mondo. Concedi anche a noi di ritrovarci insieme a godere per sempre della Tua gloria, in Cristo nostro Signore, per mezzo del quale Tuo Dio doni al mondo ogni bene. Per Cristo, con Cristo e in Cristo, a Te, Dio Padre Onnipotente, nell'unità dello Spirito Santo, ogni onore e gloria per tutti i secoli dei secoli. Obedienti alla parola del Salvatore e formati al suo e divino insegnamento, by divine teaching, we dare to say. Pater Noster, Dies in Gelis, Santi Liberaci, o oh Signore, da tutti i mali, concedi la pace ai nostri giorni e con l'aiuto di Dio graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Signore Gesù Cristo, che hai detto ai tuoi Apostoli, vi lascio la pace, vi do la mia pace. Non guardare ai nostri Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your Apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Nello Spirito del Cristo risorto, Scambiatevi il dono della pace. And we're invited to turn to those around us, wherever we find ourselves, and we share the peace of the risen Lord.
figli e figlie carissimi, mi rivolgo a voi che in questa notte gloriosa, rigenerati dall'acqua e dallo Spirito Santo, dear brothers and sisters, I turn to you, you who will be receiving the body and the blood of Christ, the bread and the cup of salvation for the first time, May the body and the blood of Christ make you to grow always in his friendship and in, in the communion with the whole church. May it accompany you in your journey and help you to be committed in your journey to heaven. He is the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And we also take a moment and think of all those of us who are following this celebration, um, especially those who are sick and who couldn't be in church this evening, those in hospitals at home, in the retired villages, and together we pray the act and act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The Holy Father distributing Holy Communion to the newly baptized, receiving the body and the blood of Christ for the first time. Sandri, who has been the celebrant on the altar, Prefect Emeritus of the Dicastery for the Oriental Churches. He's also the Grand Chancellor of the Pontifical Oriental Institute. He's the Vice Dean of the College of Cardinals. We, we heard him addressing those warm words of welcome to those who are receiving the body and the blood of Christ for the first time the eight catechumens who have just been baptized, confirmed, and they are now receiving Holy Communion directly from the Holy Father, Pope Francis. about 6,000 people who have gathered here this evening here at St. Peter's Basilica and at this moment uh, as we can see in our images those who are following on the screens deep moment of communion of prayer and reflection it's about 6,000 people we know that there is uh, about 34 cardinals and 25 bishops and about 200 priests May Christ be praised and worshipped. Glory to the Lord. Seeing all peoples of the earthly kingdom, Christ reigns. God. Glory to the Lord. We rise in you, God, our Savior. Christ is Lord. Glory to the Lord. The choir leading us with that communion antiphone. We have 
have witnessed this evening, the Easter Vigil Mass is rich in symbolism, with each symbol representing deeper spiritual truths and aspects of the Christian faith. We saw the Paschal Candle, which is the central symbol of the Easter Vigil, representing Christ as the light of the world, signifying his resurrection from the dead. The candle was blessed and lit from the new fire symbolizing the triumph of light over darkness and the victory of life over death. The new fire itself, the lighting of that fire at the beginning of the Easter Vigil, represented the light of Christ dispelling darkness of sin and death. It symbolizes the new beginning brought about by Christ's resurrection and the renewal of life in Him. procession of the Paschal candle into the darkened church, symbolizing Christ's victory over sin and death. As the light of the Paschal candle dispels the darkness, it signifies the presence of Christ among his people and his triumph over the powers of darkness. witness as well we saw the baptismal font which plays a significant role in the Easter Vigil as it is the instrumental vessel for the initiation of new members into the church through baptism. The baptismal font symbolizes purification, regeneration and new life in Christ. We also used water this evening, another powerful symbol which was used abundantly during the Easter Vigil for the sacrament of baptism in the renewal of baptismal promises, it symbolizes cleansing, rebirth, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the newly baptized. in our hearts for the gifts and the graces received during this celebration. A moment of deep communion with Christ, communion with the Church. Approaching then the conclusion of this uh, beautiful uh, liturgy we have witnessed tonight. We're celebrating the resurrection of Christ. And the Holy Father will lead us in the concluding prayer, after which he will give us uh, the blessing. And then we will sing the Regina Celi, O Queen of Heaven, rejoice. Alleluia. We stand now when we prepare ourselves to pray. Preghiamo. Infondi in oggi, Signore, lo spirito della tua carità, perché saziati dai sacramenti Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those we have nourished by this Paschal sacrament one in mind and heart. And the Holy Father will 
give us uh, the final blessing. El Signore sia con voi. Sia benedetto il nome del Signore. Nostro aiuto nel nome del Signore. Egli ha fatto il cielo e terra. Vi benedica Dio Onnipotente, Padre e Figlio e Spirito Santo. Amen. Vite misa est, alleluia, alleluia. of heaven rejoice alleluia for he whom you were worthy to bear alleluia has risen as he said alleluia pray for us to god alleluia and that's how we bring we come to an end of this beautiful celebration of the eucharist here at saint peter's basilica presided over by his holiness pope francis I invite you to join us again tomorrow, Easter Sunday morning. The Pope will celebrate the Easter Sunday liturgy beginning at 10 here at Rome and Rome time. That will be followed by the Easter Urbi et Orbi message and uh, the blessing at 12 noon. Please visit the Vatican News web portal, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube accounts. You will find photos uh, for a summarize and, and the summaries of the Pope's homily. A summary of the Pope's homily delivered these days, uh, playback of the liturgies as well as other coverage of Vatican and world news. On behalf of Vatican Media, I would like to thank our in-studio audio technicians, our audio coordinator, as well as our media partners, Catholic TV, Shalom World Television Networks, EWTN, Catholic Faith Networks, Salt and Light Media, Sunday Shalom, Shalom TV, UC TV, uh, at Madarshan TV, Radio Maria, England Relevant Radio, Luminous Radio, and all the channels who picked up the world um, worldwide through Mindio, uh, Mondo Visione this evening. On behalf of Vatican Media, I am Bonga Majola. I wish you all of you a blessed and holy Easter. Christ is risen. He is truly risen. Alleluia, alleluia. We thank you for joining us for this special broadcast of the Easter Vigil Mass. And may the light of Christ's resurrection fill your hearts with hope and joy. And may you experience the fullness of his life now and always. Until we meet again, farewell and uh, happy Easter to you all. Laudetur Jesus Christus, praised be Jesus Christ.
。